You're absolutely right. I mean, sentiment is the most bearish that we've seen since 2009, coming out of the great financial crisis. But, you know, in our view, as you mentioned, our firm is pretty bullish. I mean, if you look at what's happening with the economy right now, um, U.S. consumer spending increased by just over a percent in March. Um, as we know, about two thirds of the U.S. economy are really stem from consumer spending. Um, I know that the you know GDP contracted in the first quarter, but if you look at real um, domestic sales, they actually increased at 3.7 percent last quarter versus 2.6 percent in the previous quarter. Um, and if you look at you know the tight labor market, unemployment is at historical lows. And also look at household balance sheets. I mean, for the first time in three decades, um, U.S. households have more cash than they do debt. Um, so we think there's still a pretty strong underlying uh, economy and consumer right now. And what do you say to folks who say the recession is coming and that, um, you know, some of the big houses have noted a recession could happen um, in January of 2024 so that it won't happen right away. But as the as the Fed begins to pull away the punch bowl, which is exactly what's happening, that the inflation picture is close, caused slower growth, the Fed raising rates and spinning off the balance sheet, all of that will lead to some problems in our economy. It's, it's possible, right? Anything's possible. I don't have a crystal ball. If I knew what was going to happen in 2024, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have to be right. working right now. Um, but I think the the numbers that I mentioned about the economy are really reflected in earnings. I mean, look at what we've seen this earnings season. You know, 80% of the earnings that have come in have beaten estimates um, with an average top line profit growth of 13%. And we're looking at, you know, quarterly profit growth of 7%. So I think the continued um, spending by the U.S. consumer and growth of the economy is really reflected in what we're seeing with earnings. Now, obviously, sentiment is so low because of some of those things that you mentioned, right? About 28% of economists forecasted think that there will be a recession next year. Uh, there are tremendous headwinds with rising interest rates and inflation, the conflict with Russia and the Ukraine. But ultimately, you know, as a long-term investor, financial planner, working with all of our clients in retirement or building up to that, we can't really predict what's going to happen. And we just kind of have to block out the noise and manage the risks as best we can. Um, and that's, that's really staying invested. I mean, if we're, if we're going to cash and waiting for this to settle down, you know, we can't time it and we're, we're just losing purchasing power every year. Understood, understood. And there must be some opportunities along the way, right? It's a little bit of the baby out with the bathwater. And while we're not getting a lot of indications of oversold indicators, there are some things that have sold off a lot. Um, the NASDAQ in particular, we've seen FANG getting hit. I saw in your notes you had names like PayPal and NVIDIA and a few others that have been hit hard, Netflix. So in the end, um, when you look for opportunity in a difficult market, because I agree with you, I mean, there's always opportunity, but it's a difficult market without no doubt. You look not only here at home, but also abroad, right? Tell me about some opportunities you're sizing up. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, one of the areas that we've seen outperform over the last year or two, especially this year with the volatility pretty much everywhere else in the market is commodities. Um, you know, with the cost of raw materials and all those things, commodities have been doing really well in this inflationary environment that we're in. So I think emerging markets really provides a great opportunity moving forward. I mean, a lot of these emerging market economies are commodities-based economies. Um, if you look at emerging markets at the index versus the S&P 500, for example, it's trading at about half the valuation and paying double the dividend. Um, and I think if we do continue to see inflation and supply chain shortages and all these things that are ultimately going to benefit commodities, um, emerging markets is definitely a great place to be. Yeah. What about other commodities here at home when you look at things like gold and silver and energy? Um, you know, we've, we just finished talking about the strength of the U.S. dollar. But um, do you ever look at those kinds of commodities? Sure. Yeah, we definitely want to own, you know, commodities based index as well uh, with all those things that you mentioned, you know, precious metals, oil, natural resources, agriculture. Mm -hmm. We look at right now what's going on with the price of corn and wheat. Um, so absolutely, we want to own all those things. And, you know, if you look at market trends historically, like from 2000 to 2009, emerging markets and commodities yeah. did pretty well. They really haven't done much of anything over the prior decade, you know, from 2009 up until a year or two ago. So we think that there's probably going to be a shift and, you know, we're, we're likely to see some of those other things outperform over the next 10 years or so, as opposed to what we've just seen most recently with growth and tech in the U.S., for example. 